First of all, let's move on to Arsenal because they've dominated the back pages today. I'm going to spin you through a couple of them so you can get a flavour of what's being said. Uh, the Guardian, let's start with, uh, you should feel embarrassed. I think that was a chorus throughout football yesterday. Arsenal humiliated by the team, 65 places below them in the English football pyramid on Tuesday night. And uh, look at the subject there, the Bradford captain saying that Torquay were tougher opponents than Arsenal earlier this season, your former club, Leroy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at the Daily Mirror, my own paper. Sorry for being so brad. Uh, and uh, the subject on the left-hand side, the Arsenal chief, Ivan Gazidis, meeting uh, with the section of fans and apologising uh, for the performance. Actually saying in his apology that he's tired of making that kind of apology because Arsenal's performances have been so consistently bad. Let's go to the sun. Now, this is a story that's developed uh, over the last couple of days and caused a little bit of consternation among some sections of Arsenal's uh, supporters because they say it's been overblown. But the facts of the story are very true. Uh, there is a fear of a rift between Arsene Wenger and his number two, Steve Bold. And also the players are sick of playing the pretty football. They want to be... Uh, they want more defensive drills. They want more training that will enable them to be a bit more solid and they're not getting it. Uh, they Basically, the allegation is that when Arsene Wenger was away uh, the other day, Steve Bold, the defensive coach, was not allowed to take training and uh, it was given to another member of his staff. And let's give you the times as well. Wenger given £50 million to spend. Arsenal pledged transfer funds, a show of faith in manager. I'm concerned about that story. I mean, this whole idea that Wenger's going to go to other clubs with £50 million in his back pocket, they will see him coming. That's just going to be a disaster for the January transfer winner. And also, you look at clubs up and down the Premier League, mm. chock full with big money signings. And, you know, Ch Chelsea trying to make it work with Torres. Uh, United have had their fingers burnt with record transfers. They've just let Berbatov go back to Fulham. Uh, they signed up for £30 million. Though, I mean, it's not, yeah, but uh, he couldn't get into the side in the final season. I'm just saying... Uh, there are lots of elements of this trouble me, but let's hear what you've both got to say. Well, firstly, on that, that £50 million is, is, is too little, too late. The horse has bolted, you know, and the problem that Arsenal have had is uh, letting go of world-class players and not replacing them. And if they think they can rectify it in a January transfer window, this is nonsense. You know, the, the problem is that at the moment, because Arsene Wenger's been there so long, uh, that it is institutionalised in his way of doing things. Um, to change things around is going to take a lot longer than 50 million in January. It needs a total overhaul. It needs a change of attitude, not only from Arsene Wenger, but from the club as well, who's given him too much power. Mm. You now, people keep saying to me, oh, they're not giving him the money to spend. Arsene Wenger drives that club. Absolutely. I, I, I totally drives that club. I, I disagree about the money. Mm. And I mean, I think I'd compare him to Alex Ferguson in this aspect, where mm. Fergie now talks about how it's the um, tradition of the club to bring young players through mm. and and that's true but it's um, making a virtue out of necessity because Fergie doesn't have the money and similarly I don't think that Wenger has the, I don't think that Wenger has the money either he's not been shy of spending it in the past he spent a lot of money on players like Reyes on Will Tord on Henri the reason why he's not spending it now I think is because the money is still paying back the mortgage for the ground because he's not suddenly become a different man I think, who I objects think, I, in principle. I, I think you're wrong, Daniel. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll bring in our first guest. He's Pete Woods. He's very much a friend of the show. Uh, he's got uh, at Le Grove on Twitter if you want to follow him. A lot of people do. Very authoritative on all things asked. Good evening to you, Peter. Evening. Uh, now, so. you've been listening to what the chaps have had to say. Uh, first of all, respond uh, to what Daniel's been saying. Uh, Daniel thinks there's not enough money. Uh, there isn't any money at the club. Is that your uh, understanding? I, I, I think that's. I think that's. We've gone over that so many times before. Categorically, there is money at the club. It's it's there for everyone to see. There's 70 million in uncommitted funds. Whether he's got the full 70 million to spend is a different question. But even if he's got 30, you know, even if he's got half of that available, he didn't spend it in the summer when he should have spent it. But I, I, I agree. Uh, I agree with the comment that was made uh, around 50 million in January. What's the point? Who are we going to be able to bring in in January? Who's going to really turn this around? Like I, I, I don't. I don't even know whether you'd want to give Arsene Wenger 50 million pounds. You know, are we going to let him drain all that money away when it's when he's, he's, he's not really making? He's not really made good signings over the last couple of seasons, in my opinion. And I, I, I don't think he's the man to take Arsenal forward. And I, I don't think that he'll spend £50 million in January. And I think talk of players like Huntala coming in, um, Wilfred Zaha coming in, I mean, it's, it, it's all quite 
it's all quite disappointing, really. But, but you know, who, who, which teams are going to let their best players go? Pete, I was um, reading your blog today, and you made a number of points of things within the club that needed to be looked at and you said if Arsene Wenger embraces those things then fine that if he does but if he doesn't then it's time to maybe look elsewhere but my worry with that is that you've really got to be careful with what you wish for surely because if you part company with Arsene Wenger you effectively change the culture of the club and suddenly you become a club where you bring someone else in and if things don't go well you change that manager then you change again and your stability is lost. Darren, I don't think you'd necessarily change the culture of the club. Barcelona change a manager and they don't change the culture of the club. The culture of the club is there. Arsene Wenger's kind of, he's set it. Like our style, our brand of football will hopefully forever be uh, a track. That's, that's the, the, you know, since tonight came in, we've, we we're, we're elevated as a brand. I, I think it's not careful what you wish for. It's, it's careful what you settle for. Do we continue to settle for a manager who sells his best players every year? Mm. Um, a, a manager who players say, oh, I mean, Cesc Fabregas went to Barcelona, said that he, you know, he learned tactics there. Um, Robin Van Persie left because we weren't ambitious enough. Uh, we can't even get Theo Walker to sign a new contract with mm. us, which is really worrying because he's certainly not one of the best players in the Premiership. Mm. Uh, Sanya might not sign on. Like, Six like, years, though. Complete pitcher. Like, you, mm. you can't persist with a manager. Like, what, what, what would I prefer? I prefer to see a new manager come in with fresh ideas, mm. a modern approach to the game, and, and, and